Okay, wonderful. Uh, so tell us when they are live. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to the all of you. The mentorship program, which is the brainchild and the main event for this year, is peer-headed by the career guidance program that we are hosting today. This is the Medical Faculty Muslim Majlis for you. I warmly welcome all of our audience from Facebook Live and Zoom for today. And I am honored to introduce our distinguished speaker for today, Dr. Yusuf. Dr. Yusuf is a graduate from the prestigious Colombo Medical Faculty. He is a doctor of medicine from the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine, Colombo. He obtained his MRCP from UK and presently works at the Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge. So we are honored to have you. Medicine. Medicine is a sea of knowledge and we are all having a voyage in it. And just like any voyage, it is a very difficult task. It's very tedious. We spend months, months and years of sleepless nights. We get scolded by our consultants. We are trashed. But nevertheless, every effort that we put in turns out to be good when we are able to, by God's grace, save a patient's life. And that I can tell you is very rewarding. The art of medicine is not an easy part, but the reward is very important. And thereby, we can start our session for today. Sir, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Rahmatullahi so we are honored to have you, sir. And uh, is there anything that you would like to tell our audience today? Uh, Jazakallah Fayaz for having me as one of your old seniors. Uh, not so old, I suppose. Just about few years from I passed out. Uh, well, we, I think we should have an interactive sort of session going. So that will be ideal and helpful for others as well. Uh, what I'll do is I'll try to sort of highlight some of the probable mistakes that I would have done in my undergrad career and uh, probable obstacles that commonly we face as a, on a daily basis as we are in medical students and uh, how we sort of tackle them effectively. And the other thing that I would like to say is that uh, now I have the luxury of uh, retrospectively seeing things. So now I have gone through the system and I am almost in a certain position currently. Uh, so the things that which I would have done better and which I did, which was successful and which I did and was not good at all. So those thing, kind of things I thought of uh, sharing my knowledge, my experience with you all. Uh, so that hopefully it will sort of uh, guide you all in your career pathway. And uh, please feel free to ask any questions. It is, I would like to have this as an intro. It is not a formal lecture. I did not prepare for a formal lecture. This is sort of I just share my experience with you all. And uh, probably in future, if you all want to particularly target in one specific area that I could help you out with, so that could be done. So we'll go this in that way, Fires, if that is okay with you. Yes, definitely. Uh, so the way this uh, is usually conducted is uh, we'll be uh, posting this on FB. It's a live session, so people can ask questions. Uh, I'll convey those questions to you, sir. Right. So that That's way great. we can make it as interactive uh, as possible. Yeah, so just try to interrupt me when I'm going. So once you get any questions, and just uh, just block me out, okay? Sure, sir, sure. Sir. All right. So, so then uh, we have a few questions for today. Uh, so then, so what is the importance of clinical exposure to undergraduates? Uh, clinical exposure in sense the time we spend in wards. Uh, yes. Uh, before I start on it, I, as you correctly said, now I was I passed out in uh, my I did my A levels in two thousand and five. And I passed out from the Columbia faculty in 2013. And I did my internship at uh, National Hospital, Sri Lanka. Uh, then uh, subsequently, I was put into uh, RHO in accident service. Uh, then I was in the post interns in uh, Burns unit in NHSL as well for a particular short period uh, before I got through the MD part one. And uh, from all those years, uh, I have been uh, lucky enough and probably privileged enough, enough to work at National Hospital Sri Lanka. So uh, throughout, I had been there. 
uh, then uh, i think just before i left the uk i was posted to teaching hospital batical as an acting consultant physician and uh, currently uh, i'm just starting work with adan brooks hospital cambridge for my foreign training and uh, so it's basically i've been passed out i'll say uh, seven years from the past out years so think uh, you might think that i'm a little old but then uh, <laughs> 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 that old i suppose uh, yes uh, so when you go back to i just um, i just go through some of the stuff uh, so you know the clinical correlation uh, first of all i think uh, this uh, webinar would be viewed by uh, first year second years mostly undergrads i think undergraduates no, I as think well as uh, graduates graduates as well okay i don't know how useful it will be i try to focus on the undergrads no, because right. yeah mostly on the undergrads and if the postgrads have some questions they definitely they can uh, shop in and ask uh, so the important thing is uh, as you were uh, telling that you were trashed and there's some bad experience during medical student times that's very true that was everyone goes through right in particularly in uh, colombo when you say you are the cream of the cream <laughs> at cream of the top and you you get trashed more <laughs> you get pressurized more and that you have to perform on a certain level uh, but then uh, so that is part of the <laughs> package you are coming into uh, you are coming in your top hundreds your top merits you are your district first uh, it is a lot of pressure and you know uh, especially the initial couple of years first years uh, i hope the other important thing is the language barrier we have uh, so if you are good in english and there was a certain uh, definite advantage over others that because everything is in english but again that's only for a short period once you put your hard work in a language doesn't matter language is as uh, others as uh, all the others say that language is not knowledge uh, so you put in a work if your once you put your hard work then it doesn't uh, matter so what i would say is that from your start from your initial period you have to go study smart and you have to study in a effective way so that was one the thing that uh, when you think behind when you retrospectively think that we lag uh, but i mean by that now when we had we had the introductory basic science stream ibss then you went into the applied science stream then you have the finals and the clinicals i hope is that the same uh, files it now or a little different Uh, so right now, so we have the module system. So yeah, the modules, modules the were there. Yeah, the modules. Yeah, yeah. The in the after after you go into the module, the plan is the same. Yeah. So I think nothing have changed a lot after I left. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so what happens is that uh, what we did, or I would say that what I did, I was not a studious uh, student at all. So as as uh, and you take it as we were pretty in the probably we might say the last pinches. So what we do was. Um, you play till the end and then you try to cram it up at the end uh, and you try to just uh, work a week before the exams and you barely pass that <laughs> we are lucky enough to pass all this exam in a in a sort of you because you cram it at the end as i think that's what we did uh, but the problem with that is that the mentality that was put into us i think uh, probably that uh, everyone the seniors all those sort of entrusted on us was so sort of, you have to pass the exams you have to get through the exams exams exam the, that mentality of the prime objective is to getting through the exams uh, i would say it does not serve you good at all uh, because uh, if you take at the end if you think all back i'm talking with my experience everyone of you all will pass your in bbs you all will become doctors there's no doubt absolutely no doubt so some <laughs> might be unfortunately you can do it on the second time so that's it so you but definitely you all will get through 1.5.2 that's very minimum no you you don't take them into consideration so you all are going to pass the exams you're going to get through as a doctor so then but then you have to sort of work smartly that now you are as you said that you are wasting years years no 1 2 3 4 5 6 years but then at the end of the day if you don't utilize the work done on those years when you come as a doctor so it's sort of you have you are answerable to allah as well that's very important because 
it's not about merely passing the exams and if you don't retain that knowledge what you have studied that i see a lot uh, i used to take classes i think uh, many of you all i know when i was in my uh, what 42 and when i do is my medicine a senior registrar so i used to take a lot of classes so I, what i see is that they don't connect what they study so they do the ibss finish it off they get first class they get second up but they forget the whole thing off and they come fresh as new year a new students in the applied science they do the modules respiratory module done finish it off keep the respiratory books away nothing done so then you go for the next module as a fresh module i mean that kind of thing is uh, sort of it does not help you at all and there is no connectivity i mean that is what because we always told that Uh, the module our system had a problem when we were all said yeah we were telling that uh, this is not helping us because there is no connections you you sort of forget the whole thing behind and then you come fresh so in that case you don't clinically correlate as well that's what is lacking so what you do is you study the cardiovascular system even though you go to the clinical appointments you are more focused on your cardiovascular system module because at the end of the day it's all going to be clinical and how much you correlate between uh, fires uh, is it sort of new what do you think so this is what we thought as when we were there as in our patch so we had we thought this was an issue because we did not have connections uh, retrospectively now we think that we should have made more use of the time to make these connections so what i'm saying is that you study your physiology you study your anatomy you take the clinical sense and you you have to revise what i'm saying is just give a little time when you come for the modules just don't forget the physiology off because physiology anatomy if you are going to become do surgery if you are going to do medicine physiology is very important so you have to sort of always plus otherwise we are going to start in your post grad it's all going to be new to you you're going to start from yanong from the first page which is not going to serve you so have those connections work smartly study effectively so don't try to connect as much as possible because uh, uh, our brain is a lot of interconnected neurons so you want to connect what you have studied before with the present thing as well so when you go for your clinical stream when you learn about the disease see the pathological basis the physiology behind it go back to your old notes so sort of connect it and that uh, let me tell you that that remains for a longer time and i think that makes you a better doctor now you can pass the exam you can still get your first classes your distinctions but if you don't sort of do in this manner you retain all your stuff you will not be an effective doctor and and uh, you feel sometimes that so then uh, i think uh, i don't know whether you get these questions and uh, why did, after people graduating they might think why did i study all those biochemistries why did i study all that and it is not it is it is it when you connect it and you learn you enjoy it more as well what i'm saying is it takes a little more time not a lot of time okay it just takes a little more time what i'm trying to say is uh, be a little consistent so that will be helpful a lot you don't try to go and do it at the end uh, sometimes we did uh, i'm not telling that we will all do doing this stuff because we did that as well but then uh, just make 3 or 4 hours a day just concentrate do for 3 hours you have you can have your other stuff other uh, works going as well i know everyone is busy especially students you might have other commitments as well so but then be consistent 3 or 4 hours a day sort of revise the whole stuff connect it with each other study smart study effective so when you come to the final uh, let me tell you when you become a graduate when you become a doctor and you study your post grads you will shine because you you sort of you know, understand the whole thing and definitely i think uh, each and every year you pass each and every time is considered very important and you will be questioned by allah uh, so that uh, if you sort of you sort of sort of you, you what do you say you will cheat yourself if you sort of cram it up at the end you pass the exam and you get through but that's not the motive at the end of the day it should you should be able to be a good effective doctor and you should be able to treat patients properly and for the sake of patients and so for this as you all know this is considered as ibadah the studying is an ibadah and this needs your commitment as well i'm not telling this is easy but then this we now experience i think this will work really well if you just plan it out just won't take a lot of time as you think it's not that once you know the setup once you know how it runs 
you will be easily you will be putting it together and tell me when you reach your finals or your final mcqs it's going to help you as a lot so finally i just summarize this thing consistency hard work enjoy studying don't forget the things what you learned before try to make a connection and for the sake of patience take take a revise once in a while and make connections i think that i will help you yes, all sir. that answers the question sir. so we have a we have one question from our audience uh, so he is asking or he or she is asking um, i uh, worked uh, i worked hard for my module and i got uh, a particular marks and then uh, i did not work hard for my next module and i got the same marks cramming in a week uh, so then uh, what what should my approach to this be exactly that's what i told you there are people who work consistently and get get a particular mark they say x then you and there are another group of people who don't work at all and they cram at the end uh, about 5 7 days to all these go for these bats cupies no it's commonly known and uh, you get through the cupies and you pass the exam and you get the same x mark as well so <clears throat> then that is where you know on the long run you will get through the just don't worry about these modules and passing it even though you fail in one module it's not going to take anything out just be uh, be truthful for yourself okay what i'm saying is uh, you know you know your final goal finally you have to be a good doctor that's why this is not this uh, when you say this is not like engineering or this is like accountant this is sort of this is a mediated profession so you are not coming here to sort of this you can the other merits will be happening but then this is predominantly service so for this you have to do the best for your patient just think when a patient comes to you and uh, you have crammed the last bit of the module and you have forgotten to read that part and the patient comes in particularly that part of the uh, module and which you have skipped and which was not important for the exam and the patient comes with all those clinical details and stuff and you are wondering so what do i do now so see so that is where you get caught don't focus on the exams so if there is one take home message what i would say is don't focus on particular exams exams will come exams will go you are definitely are going to pass yes. hey, if you get a class or if you get a second up uh, first class is fine so that's but then the ultimate goal should be, you have to be a very good professional and a very good doctor who the patient will have the trust on you so when you both when you and sort of the other person as you told that you study and get the same mark that's not an issue you know that you are doing this falla as a ibada and what your ultimate goal is so i would say is that don't compare with them so you know what your ultimate goals i hope that answered your question fast yes that's uh, so uh, do you have any tips or tricks that we can use to correlate our module knowledge with the uh, clinicals anything that you did yeah module knowledge with the clinical exactly so mostly i think you'll be starting clinicals from the second year second third year so yes. what i see is that uh, when they come to the wards i get second year third year students as well so they sort of um, how do i say i give more emphasis on clinical work so first of all you learn your uh, examination techniques the all five system examination techniques and then uh, taking a proper long case uh, proper history with detailed history without forgetting any components uh, so those are given emphasis on that particular occasion uh, but then once they sort of come in so what i use always used to say is that you remember things a lot when you have as a visual audio as well as you connect with your previous knowledge so when you see a patient so we say when you see a patient with for example uh, neurofibromatosis okay you have studied in the past so then you yeah. go back once you see the patient you read around the patient in your clinical it's very important it's not about you carrying other books and reading other stuff you see that patient you see the clinical features and you read those patients and what are the quickly you made a point make a make a short summary out of it you carry it in your sort of kit so that way you remember you see the patient you read the, uh, the clinical features you short management short summary carry it with you so second third years what i usually do is i more concentrate more on the clinical skills how you examine because examination is very important as well as taking a good history 
Uh, when it comes to the module, so this is what it breaks up. You no, know, it's very difficult when you are doing the module system to go and get it, see the exact. Now, <clears throat> you see, you are going, you are doing the cardiovascular module, but then you are doing an appointment at the nephrology. So, so this direct correlation does not happen with this uh, uh, applied science. But they try to do their best, but I don't think it's possible. So. It, it's very difficult when you go for the cardio, you study the cardiovascular model and go to the cardiovascular unit, cardiology unit. It doesn't happen like that. If, had, if it, that is the case, that's good. So you can see and sort of study the patients and come back to your theory and learn. But then that doesn't normally happen. Uh, am I right, Fires? I think uh, when we had. That's actually true. Happened, so. Yeah. So, so in that case, so you will be doing it in a later occasion. So then, so that's what I'm saying. You study when you are doing, you give importance for your clinical work. So obviously you have your applied science model, you have your module, you have your exams. I'm not trying to completely focus, but just give a little time for that. But your main focus should be clinical work. When you're working the world, you will retain this stuff much more. Trust me. So rather than studying for your applied science module, you, you do your clinical work properly and obviously give one hour for the applied science but what are you do and then you can sit for that exam as well but then this stuff that you learned in your clinicals you will sort of carry it on for your finals and there you will score more because at the end of the day if you are more if you are really uh, sort of result oriented you want to get the high scores it's about your final mcqs your short cases your long cases so and how you perform in that that's how it's going to affect your merit score. So, so it's not your applied science. It's, it's going to carry a little marks on that, but not a lot of stuff. Merit list should be primarily targeted with these kind of things. So if you can do your clinic properly, clinical work properly, you will definitely shine. Thank you, sir, for that. Uh, so we have another question. Uh, what are the sections that are especially important in our uh, final MBBS? Example, the relevance of histopathology for the final MBBS. Yeah, final MBBS, uh, yeah, final MBBS, the, the, basically the system, right? It's primarily the, <clears throat> the clinical medicine, the clinical part of it, medical part of it, the surgery, the genomes, the pediatrics. So if you take, those are the broad topics. Now, histopathanol, it depends now uh, what part of the disease you are studying. So if I'm saying you're going to get a, for an example, you're going to history of uh, glomerular nephritis. So IgA glomerular nephropathy, a part of that. So whether that, uh, that histopathology is relevant to that answer, that ACQ question. So what you could do is, I think uh, you could see your old uh, essay questions. You can see what are the questions that has been asked previously. And you can sort of prepare in that way what are important. It's not possible to study VTERS, right? It's, that's the pathology book, right? The yes, histology yes. book, VTERS. Yeah. So it's not possible Objects to remember those things. So it's not going to help you. It's not going to remember. You can't remember. It's not possible. So, but you clinically sort of remember these things. So when you say IG and property, so these are the particularly the clinical important points. When you become a clinician, you ask the pathologist to see whether there is any IgA stains. So that kind of uh, clinically important things you might have to get highlighted on that, but not the whole thing. I don't think uh, probably for the undergrad, they might go a little in detail, but it's not going to help you in the long run. So it's always take your old questions, they say questions, what the questions have come before and keep it as a guide and then you can work. Uh, that's the thing, uh, what we did. Not the whole detail of uh, Robbins or Peters, we did not go through in that detail. So do you have any experiences that you would like to relate to us? Any bad or good experiences you had during our clinicals? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there have been a lot of experiences, I suppose, and especially with uh, <laughs> some of the experiences that I can't uh, talk in this public forum, I suppose. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of uh, personalities, you know, the consultants who get, from real nice ones to real, I won't say nasty, but sort of uh, they real take the whole, <laughs> you you take a ride with them. You know, it's some real fun clinical activities as well. Most of them were really nice. Uh, when you think uh, back and you always know that uh, whatever they taught us, uh, keep us in good stands, you know, uh, most of their clinical experience. Uh, you think and sometimes you go for a, a ward class and uh, 
he the consultant does not teach you a single word of medicine and he keeps going on and on and on on of worldly stuff and stuff around and how he became here and what are the global pandemics and he doesn't teach a single word in the medical book so but then see why am i wasting the time here trust me that helps you further once you think of yeah yeah this is what sir told us when he was there so everything everything is a pearl most of them give the experience that is difficult to gain you can learn medicine in books you can have now everything is you can learn everything in up to date you can have your webs everything is in uh, portable devices you can learn about medicine but the experiences and the things that they go through that that will be uh, very sort of useful for you to come in the in the long run and especially i i think nandadeva sir is still there right the prof the surgical <laughs> prof Yeah, I, yeah, he used his usual stuff with all those clinical groups and his jokes are always, we used to still talk about those jokes and laugh around when we are here with our batchmates. So he is a unique personality. <laughs> I think you all will be experiencing that when you go for the final years, probably when you do the surgical appointment with Sir as well. So Dr. Mandika is the... Uh, yeah. Mandika Sir. Mandika Sir. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. is another one here so what are the best books that we can refer in clinicals and how to refer them effectively yeah clinicals in the sense are we talking about third fourth years is it yes yes and even final year yeah clinically so this is how uh, if you are talking practical Uh, what the, you can read Harrison's even you can read Harrison's you can read Davidson's you can read a lot of clinical books are there, but the end of the day it's about how much you retain, how much you are able to reproduce. So that's the important thing. So you can read you can read a lot of books you can read it one or two and if you don't retain anything if you don't remember anything if you can't write it back and show your knowledge in that it's not useful. So that's what I said. You have. to learn smart you have to work smart so whatever thing you read you should have retained that chronic knowledge so i'm not telling you a shortcut here right so there were some people in our batch who read the oxford uh, handbook of physics they knew it in and out they only read that thing they didn't read the uh, kumar and clark they didn't read uh, davidson or harrison any other books they read that but they ha- they knew it in and out so if you can sort of retain even that particular knowledge and you can remember it and you are able to sort of give it uh, show the knowledge in the exams that will help you in good state so it's no point having davidson you also have a copy of that <laughs> <laughs> so it's i'm not telling you to study that and go for the exam i'm just saying these are things so yeah. uh, kumar and clark davidson uh, so what the other the, the routine way what everyone tries is that to read the uh, past exam questions essays and uh, the stuff and you, then you go back and read in kumar and clark use it as a reference you don't read page to page from top to end you do you don't read books like that um, i don't know if some people they they remember but i'm not i told you i'm a last pencil so i can't remember those like that so what you read you read the question especially we did in the final years i suppose and you will go back and read the necessary stuff so this is for the exam but then what i told you before when i when i started this talk so it's about connectivity so for you so whatever you have studied before now your elis clinical anatomy with herold elis that's a wonderful book so that sort of gives uses the anatomy in your clinical day to day practice so that book is a goal i think that is what anthony sir always say right dj anthony sir so he always sort of goes recommend behind oh, yeah recommend so that that's a small book very concise one you don't you don't have to remember the grays or you don't have to remember the chaurasias yeah, and all do know that clinical stuff retain that and once you come here it will be helpful for in a long run so have that chronic knowledge going of course you are going to read it started and getting ready for the exams but then keep that in back of the mind exam is going to come i'm going to do that that's fine but then i'm going to sort of revise and keep those chronic knowledge in check as well because once you come five years complete washout and you come to your post grad you are going to start everything new 
that's not going to help you and it's, it's like you have wasted all those five years to do this postcard so what i would like to advise is keep that knowledge but okay when the exam comes you know how to do the exams as well so it's both that, that's how you work smart so we have another question sir uh, how can we manage time because we have to study modules clinical aspect of things we see in the walls and revise basic science yeah uh, that is the million dollar question right how do you manage time so you have so many work uh, so these are the so only the studying part of it there are totally another set of commitments as well sure. your physical physical health your mental health yes, your, sure. yeah the spiritual stuff <coughs> your family commitments you know some people are married in when they are in the medical school <laughs> so so there is lot of commitments so uh, so it's about sort of uh, priorities right so what i would say is family is very important at the end of the day family is going to be everything at the end of the day because you other things come for a short phase in your life and they go and the family stays throughout so it's important that that uh, you give time for everything right uh, so what that question was particularly asking about only the curriculum the education right. things so yeah. how, how how do you sort of Uh, so in that saying what i said be consistent so if you are going to study 3 hours per day and it has to be a consistent study so if you can't make it 3 hours a day so you are you are you are you're sort of you when you came to this lecture and you heard what i speak and you said no no to, from today onwards i'm going to do consistent work you do for 5 hours 2 days and third day you're not there in the desk so that's not going to work so it has to be consistent and sit in the sense if you can do 2 hours per day two hours you can sit on one table without any uh, distractions when you can study that and then you can do that for one to two hours consistently over a week or then you can slowly increase it for three hours so do it in a consistent basis once you start to work consistently you will manage time this whole thing happens the, the lack of time happens when you are not work consistently and it comes to the second year and you know you have to manage ibss knowledge you have to manage a prior science because if all those knowledge is already refreshed it's just a matter of revising it because everything is connections so once you revise it you will save time on that so once you not have this consistency there is no other shortcut so it's be very difficult for you to cover that knowledge to do the clinical work and this stuff as well so consistency doing particular work throughout so i had i won't say it's me and my couple of friends whatever they do they do put on the 4 hours so they go out they play but again they come and cover that one hour so if they miss the fourth hour this today and they cover it the next day so that's about consistency that's how you can manage time there are no shortcuts in sort of thing that uh, and i can't tell you another easy way to manage time than having a regular work throughout this kind and the other part of the question that i would like to emphasize i thought of telling you all is the spiritual stuff as well as the physical uh, health of it spirituality is absolutely essential when you are in med school you, it's like a roller coaster ride in med school <clears throat> some days you are in a real high some days you get some real low and you get depressed especially going to those lectures you know you totally don't understand a single thing what he is saying and you know how much i have to study and you know see your colleagues they are jumping and answering all those questions and you have no clue how to do it so those are the low days so to maintain a balance spirituality is very important whatever the faith you may be but i think uh, might be there may be non muslims uh, uh, undergrads as well so what i'm just i'll be targeting to i'll just be telling some views on the muslim people boys as well so it's very important that you have to stick to your spiritual health that's very important um, especially prayers do not miss on prayers five times prayers is a must you have to so that sort of refreshes you that sort of refreshes you finally gives you an objective in life where you want to end <clears throat> in a particular time uh, so prayers is very important next thing is that you spend the uh, time especially boys if you can go to the mosque at least once a day at least a once a day so you keep the connection with the mosque so it's just one for one prayer one one jamaat prayer just start with one jamaat prayer if you can make it for two three that's total that's great 
So at least one, keep a connection with the mosque. You should be having a sort of, a, I'm not telling to go on particular groups or associations or community, but the thing is you have to stick to as a group. They, when you're going as alone, when you're functioning alone, it's difficult to sort of keep into the faith as well as, and you have your low days as well. You don't get motivated. So when you are into a group or some sort of communal or a friends group, so they will all pick you up. They will pick you up when there are low days. So spirituality is really important. Keep your niyas. I think you would have been told by several people that finally this is an ibada what you are doing if your niya is correct. So keep your niyas. Uh, be spirit. Uh, try to pray fight them. Do not miss any prayers. And uh, it's very important that you show and you be the role model for others as well. So, so being that you don't have to go and do obvious dawa. You know, it's not hard. you don't have to go do and do dawa. It's just your akhlaq and the way how you conduct yourself, how how person was your personalities. Those will itself attract a lot of things. So spirituality is very important. So you can read Quran once in a while. Uh, read the Quran. So if you try to, so that I'll come back in another little bit of my uh, further talk. I have some points to tell. And the other important thing is the physical stuff. Uh, it's very important that you have to be fit. I think that was not given a lot of, I don't know, importance in our time, I think. You have to be physically fit. So you have to spend time and you have to give time for yourself. You have to nurture yourself. So whatever the sports, if you are into boys, if you are into swimming, swimming is great. You can do swimming. If you are going to go any other sports, just one or two hours. Or for take the those time, you have to allocate those time and get it done. If you're going to go for the gym, it's fine. Gym is sort of, again, the motivation factor is different. So when you're trying to play some sports that you go do it on a regular basis. So do your physical. If you are not doing any sport, that's fine. At least go for a walk. At least half an hour. What we tell our patients, you know, we tell our patients 30 minutes a day, at least five days per week, you have to do, uh, you have to do a brisk walk or a run. So medical students are the same. You have to look after yourself. If you are not physically fit, you will become lazy and you cannot concentrate in your studies. Just see the people who do sports and other stuff. They are more sharp in their knowledge. So if you are going to revise it thrice with sports and with those things, you can only re you can revise it twice and sort of remember stuff. So it's very important that you sort of look after yourself as well. So I think uh, there are not a lot of stress upon on that part. I think that should be looked after as well. Uh, and uh, the other one which I want to, I think I'll connect this and I'll try to finish this uh, part of the segment. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, dress up well. So you should always look smart. That is very important. Now you all are going to be professionals. Uh, so there is always, they say that when you become Muslims, you are not clean, you know, you are not dressed up well, you are not, uh, we can dress up much better than others. Definitely we have our borders, definitely we have our sort of limitations. Within that limitations, accepted in Islam, you can dress up nicely. Be smart, dress up well, look pleasant all the times. Okay, so those are things you have to. Uh, education stuff is true. You do, and you at the end of the day, everyone will become doctors. But then these are the things which will cool, which will differentiate from others. And these things, the way the, the other community looks at you, like that, your personality, the way you talk, where you conduct yourself, the way you communicate with others. Those are very important qualities. Those are professional qualities that what they see from you. And they say, yeah, right, these people are like this. Because that creates a very bad image. If you're not dressed up, you're not smart, you're always dirty. So be take into those uh, stuff into consideration as well. So those are important things that, especially you incultivate these uh, uh, these values in uh, for medical students uh, that will be uh, helping you to sort of uh, progress in your career. Uh, yeah, so so this is what I was talking about. I was trying to talk on work-life balance. So education is there. The spiritual side of it is they are very important. So be to one, stick to one as, uh, especially with you all, if you have medical students. So when you're going to the mosque, take others as well. Ladies, you stick with each other. Read about, you can read some uh, Islamic literature once in a while, just to be refreshed. So because there are other stuff you have to do. This is medical students. What happens is that you are so focused. 
only in doing this particular uh, studies uh, when you come out of the med school there are a lot of other things you have been assessed upon when you go abroad they assess you on what are the things you have done outside your medical school so it's important you have a global view not only particularly concentrate in your studies right uh, fires are you on yes i am uh yes and the uh, other thing is uh, uh, alhamdulillah i had the opportunity and i was studying and probably after i finished my med school i had the opportunity to memorize quran as well i did a bit of quran memorization as well inshallah me do i inshallah i'm trying to sort of do as much as possible till before uh, i end up so i'm trying to do so you, that's how you balance things there are other things in life that you have to do then i i always wanted to study arabic which i did not have an opportunity in my childhood so i'm giving time for that as well so there are a lot of online arabic courses and you can do if you want to give time you can give time that's what i want to say it's about your priorities how you manage them if you want to give time you will always have time for that if you say no i don't have time to even study how do i think of this stuff you will never have time just start giving a little bit of time and make dua dua is a very powerful thing if you can make dua allah will make everything easy for you i think i have another day i'll tell my experiences in particular in duas how it has changed my life i can for us sort of the all my decisions in life and all the way the where i am now is not because of i think uh, nothing on my side it's everything is allah so the, the things which i got things like which i got through the post things i had i think there are only very few people who stayed in nhsl throughout their 8 years of career so those kind of things there are something about that uh, controls as well so it's important do other stuff have read a lot that's very important read other stuff it's not about only medicine don't stick yourself only to medicine read about islamic literature not only islamic literature have a global view read other stuff read about other good literatures good english and uh, if you are weak in one thing if you think that you are weak in english that's i wanted to highlight on that point work on the english we are not here right now talking in this kind of english when you enter the university we also struggle with english because we was not our first language right we started in tamil medium and we started in english so it's important you work on it once you put your work once you put your hard work you will be able to do it so there is no thing no he is good at english that's what he is like it's not like that when you entered university we were not like this we had problems everyone had problems but then you put the necessary work on it and uh, that will sort of bring you up yeah fires i think that's about work life balance i for those are points such i could get anything else so we have another question sir uh, any tips to improve your history taking and examination skills other than practicing with patients yeah history taking and examination skills uh, so i always tell my second and third years before you come for the appointment you have to sort of read and come there's no point coming there and talking with the patient and asking ஒருத்தன் <laughs> Uh, read any of the clinical books either uh, tani o'connor or a uh, macloyd or a uh, hutchison any of what ever is comfortable with you should have read the five systems quickly i'm not going to tell you to read page to page just quickly go through the system you have a summarized card and especially those videos the clinical videos given by the department you should have gone through those videos you have to have your own notes a small card if you say the cardiovascular system examination a small pocket card saying inspection palpation percussion auscultation those details in a small card so then you can go and refer that in the ward so that ground work should have been done in the examination part of it cvs respiratory system neurological system and abdomen you read the nerve, uh, ground work and the nervous system do the ground work have a small card and once you go and do you know what to do definitely will be taught in the clinical work but then this will sort of reinforce the knowledge otherwise when we start teaching you are like totally clueless 
So by the time the appointment will be over, so six weeks. So if you can do some groundwork and go to the clinical appointment, that will be really helpful. At the same time, that's how you do for the history taking as well. You read the books, one or two books regarding history taking, have your components. So presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, systemic inquiry, family history, social history, drug history, obstetric menstrual history, sexual history, uh, social history, allergies, drug, food. So you write a list of stuff. You read one book, have one sort of reference. Read that book, put your own note. Have a own note with you. Have one uh, card with you with all those components that you don't forget the component. Because uh, medical students can you are not <clears throat> when you start your sort of history taking, you are not sort of wanted to analyze and come to diagnose. It's about you don't miss stuff. You should have a complete history. When you go for your third and fourth year, you can work on your differential diagnosis and come into a diagnosis part. So read one book, one or two books. Have that note set up before you go for the appointment. So when the when you give a class, what class, then that knowledge will get reinforced and you will exactly know what to take and how to take it. So and and it's about clinical disease practice. It's an art. And, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the medical students welfare society for giving us all a card. <laughs> A pretty okay. bad card on yeah, yeah, yeah. So life is getting more easy, right? Easier. <laughs> I would say easier, but what I would say is you have to prepare your own prepare card. Your own card, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. What are the students I have taught and I did it because then you remember more. Then you know what your things. Some things I forget, but others remember. So, for an example, if you take a central nervous system examination in the lower limbs, you the plantar response, the Babinski. So that I forget. So then I put a short note and keep for that. Uh, so in my card. So those some things that you forget, only you will know. So that thing has even to be in that card, welfare card. So have you that it won't take time. No? It's yeah. just, just I say uh, the whole week for the whole clinical uh, five years, you study and analyze it, you can do it in a week. Proper week, you can finish all five systems with the proper history. Once you have done it, you don't have to do it even for the final years. Final years, you're going to add on with the short case and the long cases. So, not smart. That's it. Uh, so, we have another question, sir. Can uh, doctors truly have a family life? Yes, I am having one. <laughs> <laughs> so, important thing is... Uh, yeah, you have to have a family life. No, we are we are we are sort of how do you say we are we are social animals. Social beings. Yeah, we we can't stay alone, and uh, it's very difficult. So it's important. Uh, it's important to stick with your family. If you don't have, if you have a small family, have your own clique friends. Uh, that's why I said uh, it's better you stick to one group. That's why I'm saying I'm not telling any group in particular. You join this group. I'm telling stick to any of your group, whatever is there. It's one group so that you sort of uh, feel belonging. So it's sort of uh, you are not all alone because there are times in life that you get ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. You, know, you have some real up times and you have downs as well. So when you go really down, these are the people, the family, the friends, the groups, they help you out. They try to sort of pick you up. So you come and face it again. So life is very important. And uh, that's not the balance, the work-life balance. Uh, there is no specific way. There is lectures telling that this is how you do it. So I told you the components. And it's up to you how you are going to do it. So each and in, every individual have their own way of doing it. So you can give those components. Say, These are things you have to do. Now you plan it for yourself. Now, how you are going to study? Some people want to study early morning. Some people study late night. Some people study mid-afternoon. So you fit, take the day. You calculate those times. How much you are going to spend for your studying part? You say three hours. Then how much are you going to give for Ibadah? If you're going to read something, Arabic, you're going to read. If you're reading Quran, we're going to read some literature. How much are you going to give for that? How much are you going to give for your physical activity, your sporting, your exercises, you're going for a gym, you're going for a swim, you're going to play badminton or anything else. When Whatever you're going to do, how much are you going to spend for that? And how much time are you going to give for the family? That has to come as one of your priority. It has to come one of the priority. Whether you want to call mom or call dad when you're in mid school, when you're in a hostel, how to talk with them. Uh, if you're going to go and meet relatives, 
those are very very important i think people sort of ignore that stuff and always uh, hide under the thing that they are very busy uh, they are in med school they are always with studies it's not like that if you give the priority if you allocate time everything can be done so it's up to you to give it a priority if you don't think it's a priority then it is definitely me. you say no no relatives you can't go to that place i'm totally busy with exams and all you have to manage time that's i told at the end of the day you are going to pass the exams all of you all are going to become doctors but these thing will hold in good stead at the end so the things the connections the all these good habits that you have in your med school uh, will sort of help you out when you do your post graduates and your Uh, foreign training and all that stuff as well. So I think uh, life is very important, and particularly have a good life balance, work-life balance. There's always life beyond medicine. <laughs> Definitely, that's what I'm always saying. So it's important that you no, know, especially Muslims, that you know, that uh, we have a separate goal. We have the ultimate goal that when we are still coming here for a short period. So it's very important that uh, we. show the correct uh, role models as other especially as professionals a uh, lot of people are looking at us uh, everyone wants to the truth is that everyone wants to find faults and sort of see so we have a question are... from uh, sorry to interrupt you so we have a question yeah. from a uh, premed uh, he says uh, um, what should we uh, uh, he is awaiting a uh, medical enrollment this year uh, what should we do beforehand before entering medical faculty like things that can benefit us uh, something from your experience in the terms of uh, if i had known this i might have scored or performed better uh sorry for you are talking about uh, uh, entering to the medical faculty yeah right? yeah before entering he is he has been selected to a medical faculty is uh, in the process of entering Oh uh, yeah, uh, so waiting period. So well, that's what I said. So this will be helpful for you. What I say, it's very important to maintain the balance. Exactly when you when you are new to the system, when you are first entering, you will be overwhelmed. Uh, I think everyone experiences that you will be overwhelmed with the new setup, the new place. The you are going to if you are going to you have studied in a different medium, you are going to be studying everything, memorizing, writing, reading, writing, everything in another new language. You are going to get new friends. You are going to be sometimes you are going to be far away from your family. It's a very overwhelming experience. So you have to sort of prepare yourself. That's very important. So. thing is you can start preparing like when i said uh, when you if you think that your english is a little bit you can take ex- extra care take some uh, online courses or just read read some good literature uh, build up on your english write on stuff uh, work on your english so that's important and uh, and what i told you the other stuff the spiritual stuff for it always uh, your duas your dhikrs and your uh, prayers will always help you sort of come out with these difficult times there will be lot of difficult times lot of obstacles in uh, med school uh, i think uh, for me it was always uh, going back to allah and asking stuff and making dua and praying so those thing always sort of help me out long term so it's very important you maintain the spiritual and uh, as a pre med the important thing will be one is in english important you build on english and get those books uh, i don't think you have to start studying now itself just take it easy Uh, and uh, work on the other stuff once you will have enough time to study once you come to the faculty so there is a time to enjoy a little bit i suppose okay so don't be hard on yourself and you have years to study as well life is uh, you start with a doctor you might think that i have finished studying with all my eight years with all those this thing and these and all but still i have to study it's, the life it's continuous professional development you have to always keep on studying so never get overwhelmed with studying you do other stuff and at the meantime you spend this as well faiz i can't hear you so can you hear me now sir uh, yes yes can hear me all right uh, so then uh, the last question for the session Uh, what are the signs that your family is uh, family life is affected due to your career or vice versa what are the telltale signs that you can say if you are affected uh, your family life is affected due to your career or if your career is affected by your family life 
uh, when you take your med school days, I think, uh, yeah, med school days, uh, it's very unlikely, like, uh, your parents will always be supportive, unless you are married, your parents will be supportive, and they know how much stress you are undergoing, and they don't normally make the sort of issues, you have, you don't spend enough time with them, you don't talk to them, but they understand it. Uh, I think probably when you have other commitments in med school and uh, after that, once you are married and you have kids. Uh, so I think uh, it depends. No, it depends. Everyone is going to have trouble. There is no family life uh, without troubles. If you are having a family life without trouble, I think you let me know. You teach me how to do it. <laughs> I don't think, no, I, I don't think uh, anyone in the world will tell that their life is smooth going and uh, it never happens. So you have problems. You have uh, obstacles and uh, sort of... Uh, problems are, make the life prettier and much, much yeah, more yeah, beautiful. <laughs> pretty and you learn from the problems. You, know? you learn, you become a new person, you have your faults, you, know, you get angry sometimes, you are stressed up, particularly in our field. And when you have worked over time, you are stressed up and you try to, you know, sort of, uh, kids are a real blessing, you know, when you uh, come home, you play with kids, it relaxes you. But there will be problem, but don't take it too serious. Those family problems, you can talk it and solve it. So that's all. And the family, I, as I told you, it's better you leave your work at office. Uh, it's very difficult in the medical career. It's not like uh, working eight to five and you forget and come. You are going to carry it home. Definitely, and you're going to get calls, especially when you reach a certain state, a certain position, that you will have a lot of responsibilities and you will be on call throughout, you'll be getting calls throughout the night. And it's about um, looking after the family. You teach them, you educate them. So this is your life. You sit with them, you talk to them. So anything can be solved. Anything, Any problems could be sorted out with talking. Talk to them. Uh, I think I have a problem. My uh, video went off, yeah, right? Video went off, sir, but we can still hear you. Uh, yes. So, so the important thing is it's about uh, maintaining, no? Uh, so problems, talk with, uh, talk with the family. Talk with the family members. Say that these are problems you are going to face. And uh, I think you should be able to sort it out. Uh, it's not going to be a uh, issue with uh, previous as well. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah family. Yeah. yeah, kids, wife, family. As I told, give them importance. Those are the things which are going to stay for you uh, for a longer period of time. And uh, when you're spiritual and you sp give time, uh, recite with them, uh, pray with them. So this is a good time. Lockdown years, you can pray Jamaat with your family. When you are staying with your family, you can spend a lot of time with them. You can recite with them. So those things can be done a lot these days. So once you do it and with the help of Allah, inshallah, everything should be fine. So we have one more question, sir. Uh, what is, uh, in your experience, what is the field with the least number of on-calls where you can spend more time at home? <laughs> yeah, other than a doctor, I think I'll become an engineer or an accountant and do a double <laughs> <laughs> uh, No, no, no. Uh, you, you never go like that. You don't think like that. It's not the way of thinking. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, uh, every field has its own. There are fields you will know. There are fields that are not a lot of on calls, especially for. Uh, I think uh, I'm not criticizing on ladies. Uh, they they prefer to have no less on calls and uh, sort of uh, have a peaceful sort of nights. But you should never. That should not be objective when you're choosing a field. Uh, first of all, that's what I wanted to talk regarding postgrads. So you have to have goals from your med school days. That this is the thing uh, that happens with, uh, you have to have your own interest, what you are good at. Are you good with your hand-eye coordination? Because I was very bad, uh, as you know, I always thought I was not good in surgery. Even though I did the surgical appointments and uh, the internship, I did gin and ops. Uh, uh, I was, uh, so I, I thought it was not for me. The surgery part was not for me. So you have to know what your strength what your weakness are. You will have time, about six years of studying, and that one year of internship will guide you what you are good at. 
and what you like so initially i started doing jiranabs to do jiranabs yeah. but then once i did the internship i thought no it's not going to be made so going to be difficult and uh, i sort of did not fall in love with that profession so it's important that uh, you have to sort of know what you are good at and then choose a field accordingly and work according to that if you can work from your med stud days to that i ultimately if you are going to do you say that you want to become a neurologist you can work from your med student days i know my friends so they had some incidents so they want to be he became want to be an orthopedic surgeon so he ended up an orthopedic surgeon uh, who wanted to be a nephrologist so they worked with like that throughout and they ended up like so first of all you have to have your own likings and know your strength and weakness that is very very important uh fires can you hear me hello sir can you hear me yeah yeah we can uh, yes yeah, we can hear you <clears throat> yeah uh, so know your strength and weakness uh, during your internship days i think uh, you will sort of uh, decide on the final stuff what you are going to do but again have a liking to that and always have a definitely you are going to have a lot of obstacles when you are doing postgrads it's not like i think um, i don't know whether how many uh, postgrads are here with us or so who has graduated they will know it's not like studying in med student medical student days so once you become a postgrad so your commitments are much higher you have you have to work that is one thing and you have to have a unit that helps you to study two you have a family you have wife you have kids most of us will have when you are doing postgrad so so there are funny things which happens it when you are also studying your kid is also next to you studying and he has papa uh, like uh, haven't you studied before like why are you studying now so those kind of things happen so it's it's sort of that's the part and parcel of becoming a postgraduate trainee and when you are studying your kids bang your door to open the door and come to play with your so definite more sacrifice when you are doing postgrads but again at the end of the day uh, that's your goal and uh, the those initial sacrifices will sort of help you uh to sort of uh, become the professional you want to be at the end but i would suggest is that try to finish everything as soon as possible because once you are getting old and uh, your skills go down your memory capacity goes down so try to do your post grad that early as soon as possible that's what i always tell my juniors who have passed or doing uh, don't keep it till late you don't wait till about 4 5 years let me earn a little then i uh, settle my family and study though there are people who have done that but that's pretty difficult to do so it's important with the flow you finish your postgrads and try to within 5 6 years of your post uh, mbbs you finish everything off so then there are other things to do in life as well so you have to enjoy life you can always do these things so so important take home message is uh, know what you are good at otherwise if you choose a field with low on calls and uh, low work low workload you will not like that profession you will not have job satisfaction which is sort of very very important if you are not satisfied with your profession with your job then there's no point in you wasting 6 hours of your medical career so it's sort of it's you have you are answerable to allah as well because you have wasted all this time and you are coming to do work like clerical job obviously there are uh, works such as chemical pathology histopathologist uh, what do you say uh, those people they don't normally microbiologists they don't do on calls routinely so those work uh, so those people you can sort of only do but then you have to have a liking towards that if you don't like that profession if you select that because of this was your priority and i'll tell you that uh, it's going to be difficult for you because this is a life decision and you are going to end up in that path for your rest of your life it's going to be 30 35 years 40 years how much you have all has given you uh, and if you are not happy and i think uh, that is job satisfaction is ultimate it's very important so i would say that uh, don't take that as a priority probably with family life i know there are commitments and then you decide but then you decide out of the things you have but the best you can do with your interest self interest Uh, if you really want something like that you can privately talk to me and i will guide you in that way if you are doing postcards definitely sir so then uh, i think it's time for us to wrap up our session uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Just as one more thing, I yeah. think, especially for I think uh, regarding the postgraduate, I hope that uh, uh, as I think we this time we have a lot of medical students. You know, I think yeah. around seventy five the number. Yeah, yeah. So we have a lot. We have a lot. Yeah. When we were there, I had uh, in my junior batch, I think Munsif batch, I was only one, and uh, me we had. two when we luckily we had some uh, transfers from jafna so all together we had about six seven batches we had about 22 that's the maximum we could get so our numbers were very low mashallah you have a very big number it's a very big community make use out of it help each other out that's a great thing that you all have such a big number and uh, when you have such big numbers you have more responsibility now you have lot of things to do you can be do and you can do a lot of dawa as i said the way you act the way you communicate the way you talk to each other the way you portray yourself so you have a lot of uh, this is now you are like professionals you can sort of act in a childish way so you have to sort of portray yourself with your when you are working with your other colleagues as well that is one thing other thing is everyone try to please do post grads that's very important It's just merely doing mbbs is not it, you can put a private practice and you can sort of earn but then end of the day you should become target a professional you have to be in your top of your profession so then you have a better say and you sort of will sort of be on that certain status so i would suggest it you should try a post grad uh, it's very easy it's not you just have to sacrifice a little bit And you, you teach your family, you educate your family that these are things that I'm going to do. They will definitely support you. And do your postgraduate. And if you all need any help regarding postgraduate studies, we you have a lot of seniors. There are a lot of our. I think in my batch there are two orthopedic surgeons. I'm there. Uh, in senior batches there are there is a gynae ops and there is a lot of professionals there. There are a lot of consultants there. All are willing to help you all. You can always be open to us if you need any help. Uh, so please try to do, and especially ladies. I know it's going to be difficult for you all. It's not easy. It's with family life, balancing it out. Uh, make dua, inshallah. Keep in touch with Allah, and definitely He will sort of guide you because we need you all in the profession as well. Definitely, it's not going to be this thing. I think a uh, lot of uh, professions, lot of sub specialities need you all the most. So concentrate on that. Uh, so I know it's going. To, I think it's more sacrifice than the boys. So ladies to do postgraduates, it's very difficult. I do understand. We all know that, but I think the sabab and the things which you all get is much more. So if you all anyone needs any help regarding process, please feel free to us, and I will give my email address to Faiz, so you can contact me as well. Yeah, Faiz, I'm not. Thank you. So then, sir, thank you for those uh, words. For the spurs of wisdom, uh, I'm sure all of our the audience would have been uh, benefited by this speech. Uh, so, so uh, I I always think that medicine is something that uh, you know you, you get a call towards it. It's it's not something that you come to because of the money or the fame. I mean, if you did it, then uh, your motive is wrong. But then you come there because you ha- have the love for the art of medicine and. Uh, that i think is the driving force that pushes us towards success in this field and uh, i am sure that uh, our program today would have kick started the mentorship program that we are planning to uh, hold uh, this year uh, so then inshallah before the end of my presidency i hope that uh, that program will start a group because this will be a program that will be very valuable to a lot of students as well as uh, medical students uh, because we have senior doctors guiding us and we will be guiding the elder students in return So then, inshallah, I ask all of you to ask dua for it. Um, and then, uh, so then that is most of it. And I think the link uh, should be used for the next session that's uh, going to come. So then, Jazakallah, uh, uh, sir. I uh, thank uh, Brother Deeden for uh, doing the live session. So then, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Doctor and Yusuf, for your valuable time for being with us today and uh, helping us get through this. Thank you, sir. Jazakallah. Oh, Hope it was useful.